So today on the podcast, we have Melinda Doolittle. Yay! Hello, Welcome to the hello. pod, Melinda. Thank you. I am very <laughs> excited, actually. I love having some fun. So y'all, y'all girls are fun. I said y'all. I'm sorry. I'm a country girl. Oh, no, I am too. We, this is a y'all house. Yeah, this is a y'all household. Great. Great. <laughs> yeah. I'll say you're in good hands. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Oh, you wouldn't be a guest on the podcast unless we asked you, you good, sis? <laughs> wow, that's a loaded question right now, right? Uh, I, I'm i I'm pretty sure I am. I don't even know okay. anymore. <laughs> I feel like it's, you know, it changes from day to day. And um, most days I at least have a good head on my shoulders about what is happening. Uh, but it just, especially in the arts, I mean, we're just trying to figure yeah. this out. So I, I'm i grateful to have a roof over my head and some food to eat and some, some health. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a relative amount a relative of health. health. We just finished our Thanksgiving leftovers the other day. So the food to eat kind of hit my heart a little bit because it's not, it's not mac and cheese and dressing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, you That's know, gone. I just caused the hugest stink on Twitter because I said that I prefer, don't be mad. I prefer uh, Kraft mac and cheese to, uh, I know, I know, to like uh, the baked, I can't, I don't, I don't like real cheese. In, in, <laughs> no, everybody's tried, uh, but I think like I grew up on like Kraft American and, you know, we were on welfare for a while. So like, I, I mean, I know government cheese mm -hmm. and that is good to me. Yeah. So if it's not like Velveeta or powder, I'm like, I don't understand it's, what you're doing. It's a sense memory. I think so. Yeah. So like Thanksgiving, I I mess people up because I'm like, y'all have that. And then also, can we make crack? Just, oh. just one pot. <laughs> Just the one blue box. Just, just one, in my house. one blue box. I try anything and I just, I'm like, I don't want that. I need a Kraft American slice. Like, just give me that in the plastic. Let me unwrap it, break it in half and eat it. That's all I want to do. Let me unwrap it so I know it's fake. Yes. <laughs> but you know what, respect, respect. Thank you. Um, so for our listeners who aren't so familiar with who you are and what you do, who are you and what do you do? What's your version of why you do the things you do? Okay. Well, if they're still listening after the mac and cheese. I'm sure they uh, are. I, <laughs> Few of them. <laughs> I, um, I'm Melinda Doolittle. I sing. Um, I, I act. I love just basically telling a story with music. So that is why I do what I do. I was a background singer for years. Um, after college, sang for a lot of different artists, traveled on the road with them, loved every second of being a part of someone else's story. And then a friend talked me into auditioning for American Idol, and I had to learn how to tell my own story. And it was a bit of a culture shock, but I love it now. I would not change it for the world. So now I, well, pre-COVID, I <laughs> tour all over the world um, and just sing my heart out. And we do kind of cabaret style shows, which are like, I tell stories in between songs and try to kind of take the audience on a journey mm -hmm. with me so that we can laugh and we can cry and we can do all of it um, because I have a love for theater and all of that. And I am an extremely dramatic human being, just always have been. And so I feel like everyone should be, you know, privy to my drama and so I make sure that they go with me on the ride and I I just I love what I do it's so much fun that's so beautiful I I love that you then had to figure out how to tell your own stories because people think that especially in a setting like American Idol people are like oh you're for the most part singing someone else's song so they don't think about incorporating your own background into that that's so beautiful it, you know what that it's it's a hard thing for me because I don't really write music I don't enjoy the writing process of music at all it gives me a headache and I don't love it so I've always sung someone else's song 
And so me figuring out what my story is in that song has been just a gift that I really feel like God gave me to be able to like take a, take a song and put my own story in it and be able to deliver it in that way. Cause otherwise I'd just be out here. Cause I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I sing covers. I love Relatable. <laughs> Thank relatable <laughs> so like you said you're normally um touring or like in the recording studio so uh, we're obviously in 2020 yes. how has the pandemic altered or, or changed the work that you're doing now uh completely I guess um I I mean I did my last show March 12th and then um, everything else for the rest of the year canceled. Right. Um, and now the dates, obviously, that we had in January and February, stuff like that, have all canceled. And so basically, I've been on the road as um, either a touring artist or a touring background singer for 22 years now. Ooh, wow. And so I don't, I haven't been home. Like, I, I don't know how to be home. I've not lived in my house. I've, I've owned this home for 13 years, but I haven't lived it. I've never been here for a month straight ever. Wow. So this, um, it's just so new. Everything's so new for me. Um, I'm doing some online shows and I love those. I've learned how to do them on Zoom so that I can actually see people. And then we normally have a little after party afterwards and I get a glass of wine and a onesie and I'm all kinds of happy. Yeah. So I'm able to connect and find new ways of connecting. But at the same time, I think I'm learning how to rest. I, yeah. I think I hadn't remembered how to... Um, just kind of recuperate from being on the road nonstop and all of that. You know, I had had a surgery at the end of um, October of last year on Halloween, actually. I had a major surgery um, where they found a huge mass right in my core. So they oh. like cut through my entire core, took it out. It was over five pounds. Like it just was a big to do. Yeah. And I literally was back on the road in five weeks with no core, no anything, because I was like, I still have a Christmas tour. Like I, I see yeah. your Halloween, but also Christmas <laughs> and we need to work. And so we changed it from flying dates. We got a tour bus because I couldn't even fly. Like my band put me in and out of my bunk. Well, I, I just don't know how to stop. Like I, I honestly don't yeah. know how to stop. So this has been a learning curve for me like just learning how to stop and rest and like take care of myself I'm like oh so I can just sleep all day like that <laughs> y'all don't care like you don't care that I'm not I, I'm not making music I'm not even thinking about a song right now yeah. like I'm not learning anything like I'm just living and it's been it's been pretty beautiful it's almost hard to get me to do a show right now so <laughs> <laughs> uh, I listen I don't, I honestly don't know how I've made it. I'm just now, I think it was maybe three months ago when I was clear to really start building my core back. So like it, it, it took almost a year before they even cleared that because they had to cut through everything and ended up needing to get, like take out some organs to get to it and then put them back. And so my insides were just learning how to deal. Yeah. And I honestly have no clue how I did that tour. I mean, I was drugged. <laughs> I was drugged, but I, I, <laughs> I'm not positive. It helps. I, yeah. I, outside yeah. of that, I think it's like muscle memory mm. like, where you just know like how to do it. And I'm, I'm a performer. Like the second yeah. I get on a stage, I'm like, I am on. So no matter what's going on, you're going to get a show. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to go off stage and probably collapse. But <laughs> you, know how, you know how artists usually name their tours? I'm just seeing the branding and the merch for this, like the No Core Christmas Tour. Yes. <laughs> I just see the branding. I like, I still, I was talking to my background singers, which thankfully they were a part of that tour because they don't normally travel with me, but they go on my Christmas tours. And so they covered for me a lot on stage. But, um, I was talking to them about how did we, how did I make it through and they and one of them is my vocal coach. Mm. So like 
she she sings tenor for me but she trains me and I went to her before the tour and was like hey can you help me connect with my core and she's like oh you don't have one honey so <laughs> what you're gonna have to do is just alter you know don't wow. like maybe don't add in your vibrato like don't do anything that requires a whole lot of control mm. And, mm. and so it I changed the way I sang and we went so wow. I I still don't know by the grace of God we made it through that amen we love an honest community <laughs> yeah but now you know your voice now much better than you knew it when you started singing because when you started singing you were actually asked not to sing yes I, so, <laughs> how did you at that time transition from hearing and knowing and feeling that you were tone deaf and knowing that singing is what you were going to do and what you were meant to do how did you tell yourself yes and what did it require to tell yourself yes I you know I think um I think as a kid like I didn't understand no I just didn't like no wasn't an option for me so if there was something that I just really wanted to do let's just do it like let's figure it out and it's so weird to me that that was my upbringing because I came from a single parent household. Like we didn't, we didn't have a lot. So no happened, but for some reason, my brain just didn't take it as the final answer. Mm -hmm. So I think when, you know, the teacher was like, Hey, you know, you're what they call tone deaf <laughs> and that's okay because you have charisma. So just, you know, move your mouth and just don't let sound come out. And I was like, cool. Like I'm still in the choir then. Right. You say, so I made the choir. So right. basically like that was a yes. And then when I decided like, maybe I don't want to lip sync for the rest of my life. Like maybe I'd like to sing out loud. I loved music so much that like, it just wasn't an option to not be a part of me. Like I just, I was like, how do I do it? What do I do? And since we didn't have the money for like voice lessons and stuff like that, my mom was like, girl, you're going to have to pray and you know, <laughs> just pray hard, you know? So it, I think, um, and to me, I was like, oh, when you pray, God answers those. So it, it, it never dawned on me that the answer would be no, like just literally never did. Mm -hmm. So when my voice changed, I was like, oh, here we go. Bet, let's go. <laughs> Like I, amen, I, amen. I didn't even hard at work. Like, I, I was like, okay, and I immediately like I was in my youth group, so I joined the worship team immediately. Like I mean, I was ready to go. Wow. So I think it didn't. I think I just my brain was like, this is how things work. Yeah, you're just we're set to yes. Yes, Always. I need to get better about that now. Mm. Forty three. Mm. <laughs> you. Please. It's been working. <laughs> No, I mean, like, I, I need to remember what I was like, what that mm. like 12 year old was like when like, no, wasn't an option. And I think now, like, you know, you live life, you get to adulthood and you see reality and you're like, no, no, no happens. No, definitely happens. And it, it kind of takes the wonder out of it and the fight and some of the drive. So I need to work on that. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> but okay you, you heard that no and forward on you did move so you became a household name through be, uh, being on American Idol and your time on American Idol so what is something that is the same that resonates with you today that mm. also resonated with you then in 2007 what is the same about you you guys have the best questions and I just, I can't, I, no one asked me these questions ever. Okay. What is this? That made my day. What, what is this? Say? I can't even, I'm like, wait, that's a really great question. What's the same about me? Uh, I think, golly, I've never been, this is, you guys are my favorite right now. I don't understand because this is the best question. I think um, I think that what's the same about me is is probably my my will to reach out to the people that I'm in this with. I think um, I confused Simon a lot my season because he was like, I heard that you were like helping contestants pick out their songs, <laughs> like 
He's like, Why? tell them if they pick the bad song. And I'm like, yeah, because like, if you're gonna, like, even if I win this, like, let me win with everybody being at their best, not because they chose a song that was horrible for them. Right. Like, right. Let, it, let it be honest. And I think that there was a part of me that just, I wanted to reach out to the people that I was in it with. And I think still to this day, like, I need to be in it with people and Mm -hmm. even as an introvert like I just I need my band I need my people that's probably the hardest part of this quarantine this shutdown is that when I do live shows it's me in my house with some tracks and I'm like where are my people like I just I need to include people on my journey and I think that's the one thing that has definitely stayed so much has changed for me since that show but that is very much the same yeah I mean to the point where like all of us from my season are still extremely close wow yeah well, wait most of us <laughs> I I really like to tell the truth most of us from my season are really really close yeah. because we needed each other to go through it and I think this life would be so much harder if we didn't have people with us like people that you can really trust going through the journey with you yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing. You uh, poured out all of that kindness and, and gave of yourself in a competition and still, you know, walked away top three. That's the thing. I, I think, um, I think sometimes we kind of hold back um, what we can offer to other people because we're mm-hmm. trying to get on top. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's so much richer. It's so much richer if we give what we have, if we give what we can give and still make it to the top and bring some people with us. And is it, is it, is it still the top if everyone couldn't show up? Like it's not, it really isn't. Uh, That's literally why Jordan still calls me mama and she's my baby girl. Like we, it it just is what it is. Or even if you went through it, you know, kind of more solitary, more alone, it just wouldn't be as sweet. You know, the memories wouldn't be as cherished. Yeah, Not at all. I watched uh, this season of Idol where they literally had to do it from their homes because they were quarantined. Yeah. And I cried for them because I was like, they're missing out on the the most precious part of the journey. Like that togetherness. I know that people think that the best part of the journey was like, singing in front of millions of people every week, but it wasn't, it was like going through it with your group, you know, and they mm-hmm. didn't have that at all. Even when the winner won, she wasn't, she was in an apartment by herself and she had to FaceTime her grandma. And I was like, mm-hmm. no. So. Yeah. 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 So um, shortly, very shortly after Idol, um you were offered a Broadway contract like you're familiar with Broadway you've done musicals um you have a a James Weldon Johnson tribute album which I didn't know James Weldon Johnson is black Broadway royalty like not only did he create lift every voice and sing but like the early Broadway musicals he was a part of crafting it's just astounding this (laughs) Oh, beautiful two disc album from Melinda in tribute to James Weldon Johnson. But um, shortly after Idol, you were offered a Broadway contract and decided to move on into touring with the with the finalist. Was that more of a choice about the character specifically or the show in general? It was, oh gosh, it was more about the timing. Mm. It literally was about the timing. It was right after like, what I would have been going on stage like literally right after the tour. And I was still figuring out what kind of artist I wanted to be. I was had just signed with a management company and a label. Like I, I still had like, I was just figuring life out. And I was like, I can't figure that out eight shows a week playing like, and, and playing Seely is like who I would have been playing. So like, you can't, Oh my God, Melinda. <laughs> you can't, like, you literally can't have a life outside of Sealy, right? Like, you can't no, function. No, you can't. And, <laughs> you cannot. And I would have been taking- life outside of Broadway, let alone Sealy. I mean, and that's I a different kind of commitment. Yes. And I would have been taking over from Fantasia, like, right, like, so it would have been like- She was the first Sealy I saw. And then 
it would have been like that's eight shows a week screaming and i i need you guys to know like i've named my voice tyrone it is a dude like <laughs> i'm not trying to be like hey, I'm here. like every night i can't that's a lot to ask of someone just coming off of like a show like that and then to be like here do eight shows a week and i'm one of those people where if i say yes to something i'm gonna do it fully and i was like i don't even know if i'm capable of eight shows a week plus you want me to carry the whole show like carry dramatically and all the like i i feel like it was more offered to me as a name more than it was like my ability to actually mm. do they it love so to that, do that yeah they? They still, love to yeah. do that yeah so i think uh the timing of that i just i will say no if i feel like like this this is not going to work. Like, let me figure out me. Let me get it together. And let me come back to yeah. you. Now, c- trying to come back to Broadway has been a whole nother other, but, uh, you know, that has not actually worked yet. But <laughs> now, are there any roles or musicals that whether they were on Broadway immediately before the pandemic or not, that you that do resonate with you more now in your timing now? Um, well, right now, I don't know of a role, but I wanted it was on my wall. I just wanted to be Dolores and Sister Act, like mm. with everything in it's me. been long enough to bring that back. We can do a revival. Yeah, that was, I wanted that was, what, 2009. It. Like yeah that. you can bring that back I well I auditioned when they were bringing it over from the west end I when they called me into audition I cried because I was like Jesus is it time like it's on my wall here I go but y'all I, I told you my voice is Tyrone so I don't sing high and Raise I, your Dolores voice. like first song yeah like ends on this high f and for those that don't sing it's like it's a soprano note, and then it's on an E vowel, which is maybe the hardest thing to belt on a high note anyway. And y'all, I went into that audition, and I got to the end of that song, and I was like, wait and see. Like, that's what came out of my mouth. And the man said, would you like to try that for us again? And I said, no, thank you. Not knowing that he meant, you need to try that again. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was like, no, no, thank you. That didn't go well. I would not like to say I think it's fabulous, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that audition didn't go so well. I, but I, now I've waited until like, like Raven Simone's played it. Like she's got a, yeah. a, a, like a lower voice and I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, they're ready for us now. They're not like, you have to be the soprano. Like they're ready to kind of alter some things course the show's not running anymore but that's okay bring it back for me we just want to be a part of it but um as you said before your life has been so work focused so driven and you've been on tour for years and years and years while you're on tour for those of us who really relate to a tour experience what kept you present in that time present Mm. I think um my biggest my biggest goal is to connect to each audience. And so every show is different for me. Like I had like a, you know, you have a template of a show. I don't really have a script of exactly what I'm going to say. I tell the same stories, but I may tell them differently. And for some reason, my audience talks back to me. So they will, they will just respond and based on how they respond, it changes kind of the nature of the show and how it goes and all of that. So I was always just kind of on my toes. Yeah. And I think that's probably what keeps me the most present is that the Mm -hmm. audience keeps me on my toes because I want them involved. And I've said that. And once I, once you open that door, you can't close it back. So it's, um, it's a different experience for us all the time my band and I have plenty of stories of just (laughs) how people react to us and what they want to say and I've been asked out on dates and all kinds of things did you ever say yes no no okay (laughs) the (laughs) there's a story and I want (laughs) okay I I have a very specific audience they are one of two things they are either normally 
it's changing, but normally when you look out in my audience, they are either senior citizens or gay. Like there's not, that's it. Like that, that's yeah. the majority. It's because you're a storyteller. Those are people who love a good, rich story. That, that That's the majority of my audience. I love them so, but like they're either on walkers or they're gay. So like the, the man on the walker that asked me out, like I, <laughs> thank you not quite my speed <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes but looking back on it I'm like he he probably had a job hello or, or an income which is not what I've been approached with lately so <laughs> have you paid your loans <laughs> that's what we need to know yes so when you're not touring, when you are home outside of the pandemic, the few times you get to be home, your mom is your roommate. I don't, I don't know about living with my mom. I tried to ask her because of you. I tried to ask her. <laughs> it's, a, it's a no for me. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious. Was living with your mom, like as a roommate, um, something that you always thought was possible or something that your relationship grew into? Like, was it a, a discovery or certain? No. Uh, well, what had happened was <laughs> I um, I knew, like, I'm an only child. Same. And so, yeah. you know, it was just me and my mom growing up. So my mom is, that's my girl, always. And so I knew that uh, she lived in North Carolina and I wanted her closer. I just wanted her here. Like, she had a hip replacement at one point and I'm flying out to North Carolina and then I'm flying from there to like a show and then back like it just was a lot so I I wanted her closer and so I kept kind of prepping her to move to this area like would you like to would you maybe <laughs> just want to could you possibly and then one day we were on the phone and she was like yeah I I want to move um but there's a couple things I want to do to my room before I get there and I was like what room because I didn't know. I didn't under. I thought, I just meant the city, you know. So, <laughs> um, but then I was like, oh, okay. Well, this room, okay. Let's well, let's do some things to it. And I, I have to say, it's been the best gift. Wow. Um, it was definitely a learning curve for both of us because we mm -hmm. both lived alone for years. I've been out of the house since I was eighteen. And, you know, at, at 43, we've lived alone for a long time. So it, it was definitely a learning curve of us figuring out kind of how to, how to just live with anyone else, but then how to live with each other, with me as an adult and her still being a mama, because moms can't turn that off. Hello. So, um, but we found this groove and I'm telling you what, like, there's nothing like having your mommy. Like there just wow. isn't even today. Um, I, I wasn't feeling as well. And um, I had a crazy, like kind of back to back day. And my mommy drove me everywhere. Like she, <laughs> she got in the car and just drove and waited on me to be done with one thing and go to the next thing so that I could rest on the way to the next. And the, I, I, it's really, really special. I'm grateful to have her here. And I, I would not have wanted to be quarantined with anyone else. <laughs> Um, and I'm a loner. Like I normally like my alone time, but um, it, it's been it's been really great to have her. Well, so I'm you could do it. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna send my mom that clip specifically <laughs> because I'm not saying right now, right? <laughs> but I feel like the future is waiting oh, on it. Yeah, it, like it really like we have fun. We watch This Is Us together. Hey, we watch. I mean Love yes, we watched Jingle Jangle the other night and had the best time. And, and just, you know, we, we don't like a lot of the same television, but the one, the shows that we like, we will sit together and watch and eat together and just, it's, it's fun. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So also over the course of this pandemic, we have to get to this, Melinda, you also started a podcast during this pandemic, I like us. 
Um, and that podcast is three nice things. And, and that is based on an exercise that you have been doing your entire life. So I would just love for our listeners to hear exactly what that exercise is and how it colors the conversations that you have on your show. It does. Uh, so three nice things was a thing that my mom started with me when I was four, maybe five years old. And I would come home from preschool or from school. And I was the person that wanted to tell about my entire day. Like first I went into the classroom and then I put down my backpack. Like I would tell her everything. And then I would start to have those days where something bad would happen. And I would want to tell her like, okay, this person did this bad thing to me. And so she had this rule that before I got to say the bad, I had to come up with three nice things about that person first. And if I didn't come up with three nice things, I didn't get to say the bad. Mm. And so I would be like, you know, Jessica has pretty hair. She normally wears pretty dresses and she's pretty smart. Normally? Normally. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm still gonna be a little shady. Be honest. Honest. Yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, and she's, she's a pretty smart girl, but she said I couldn't come to her birthday party because I would mess up her pictures because I was her only black friend and I wouldn't show up in the pictures. Like it would be something like that, but I would have said some nice things about Jessica first. And I'd be like, okay, so maybe Jessica is wrong on this, but she's not that bad all the time. Like she, she made a mistake and we need to fix that. But also she's done some nice things and it has colored my entire life. Like literally when bad things happen, my brain, automatically is like what's the good what's the good what's the good so I look for the good first Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that the bad doesn't exist like reality exists but it helps color my perspective a little better and I don't I don't kind of go down so deep into the bad yeah because I've I've found something good and there are certain situations where I have not found all three there are certain situations, but if I don't find all three, I don't dwell on the bad. Yep. And it tells you a lot about the actual situation. Exactly. That means back up. Like you don't need to be in that anyway, let it go. Cause if you can't find the three good then then let it go. And so when I, when I started the podcast, it was more about, can we find something good in each situation that we're dealing with, like what is the good? Because we hear enough of the bad all day long. Like where where are we finding the good? Um, mm-hmm. You guys are better at podcasting than me. I'm still like, I had a season finale already, <laughs> I, and 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 it wasn't planned. <laughs> it wasn't planned. I was like, guess the season's over because I. <laughs> So we'll start season two. Yeah, I'm like season two will be be coming. This is not my nice thing. (laughs) Done for. But see, I don't believe you because I listened to the first episode and I was like, okay, yeah, I do one more. No, yeah, yeah. especially like in the framework of 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 the topics. Like when I see a certain title, I'm like, oh, so how do these three nice things then lead this conversation? No, I love it. I really do. I just am the kind of person that's like, okay, we can do like eight, and then we take a little break. Is there Mm -hmm. is that a season? And then let's when will we start the next season? It's a surprise. Like (laughs) I, I think um, I'm still learning how to be. Oh, consistent. Oh, yeah. yeah, but that's the beauty of podcasting too. Is yeah. It's like, it really is yours. You yeah. Know? Yeah. My manager was like, so was that the finale? And I was like, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Just getting that email. <laughs> I can't. See, that's different. We don't have to report tonight. No. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so based on your podcast, Three Nice Things, we have a game. Oh no. Called, okay. it, it's three nice things quick fire. Oh. Okay. Now there are only there are only two rules to this game. Okay. One, they just have to be nice things. They don't have to be your favorite. They don't have to be okay. top, you know right? the top. Just nice that come to mind or whatever. Right. Uh-huh. And the other rule just being that you have to do it quickly. Okay. Just nice and quick. 
Three nice okay. things, quick fire. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. We're going in three, two, one. Colors. Colors? Yes. Wait. Th oh, just three, three nice, nice colors. colors. Oh, okay. I got, I was like, nice things about colors. Yes. <laughs> I've ruined the game. Three, two, one. Colors. Black, red, purple. Love it. Movies. <sighs> Jingle Jangle, The Wiz, Anna Green Gables. <laughs> okay. Oh. Male vocalists. Ooh. Mm. Bruno Mars. Uh -huh. Uh. Brian McKnight. Ooh. Uh. Ooh, PJ Morton. Ooh, yes. He's on my top See, on my Spotify I Unwound. I knew we were gonna fail at this game because we would want to talk about everything. Uh, female vocalists. Jasmine Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, ooh, Shalea. And uh, who am I gonna give it to? Oh, Whitney. Oh, good, good. Okay, quick switch. Carry out or like take out foods? Oh, um, in, fried rice. <laughs> Always fried rice. Um, burgers and um, oh, fried pie from Popeye's. Oh, uh, what is that? Okay, go on. <laughs> That's in Tennessee. We gotta go. Oh, yeah. got, <laughs> you guys have Popeye's, right? You have Popeye's. We, yeah, but we don't have fried pie. They have fried <laughs> apple pies. Oh, oh wait, my. I think yes, we do. do. Going. We're going tomorrow. Anyway, okay. um, items of clothing, but items of clothing that you own. Oh, onesies. Mm -hmm. That's always number one. Um, oh, why is this so hard? <laughs> high low, high low Aunties. shirts and leggings. Oh, what kind of shirts? High low. The ones yeah. that, that yeah, yeah. are like kind of higher, but then um, they have this train. Yeah. Yes, that, oh, yes, like the asymmetrical, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, this one. <laughs> this one we discussed. This one we discussed. Do your best. Authors. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Melinda Doolittle. <laughs> uh, William Shakespeare. William yeah. Shakespeare, right. Uh, Alice Walker. <laughs> okay. CJ Redwine. Okay. She's, I love her. Patricia Cornwell. Oh, uh, Tanahisi Coates. Ooh, HU. Countries you visited. Countries. Oh, Tunisia. Mm. Oh, Tunisia, Israel. Mm. Oh, uh, Zambia. Oh, my Lord. I haven't been to any of those. Okay, here's a fun one TV shows. I love TV. <laughs> um, okay, this is us. Survivor. Oh. And uh bull. What was the last one? Bull. 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 Yes. Bull, 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 bull. bull. Um, the last one. Christmas songs. Oh, oh. y'all know Christmas is no wait. Yes. Wait. <laughs> you are not alone. I asked this for you and Kayla. You are not alone. Cause you, but Kayla, my Christmas tree has been up since October of 2015. I need you to understand. What, I'm, not, I'm a Christmas music listener year round. I feel I it. all year, and I save Hallmark movies just in case. Mm -hmm. Lifetime now because they have black people. Okay, um, mm -hmm. mm, Christmas songs. I can do it. The Christmas song. Okay. Shoot. All I want for Christmas is you because it's not Christmas until that plays. Naturally. True. <laughs> Let me explain. See, because there are songs that I love, but then Just when my... I go to sing them, they're awful. <laughs> so they're tainted. Yeah. Oh my God. Me building my book in college. <laughs> like, I'm like, I love this song. Like, Oh Holy Night, gorgeous. Don't, yeah. I, don't make me sing that. Like, <laughs> oh, um uh oh drummer boy justin bieber and buster rhymes Ooh. Oh, adds to spotify i have to listen to that so this is a great list all true. around That's i plug true. in my tree whenever i'm having a bad day 
Yep. I just yep. plug it in and it feels better. Like if I go overseas, when I come home, mom has the, the tree plugged in because she knows like mm-hmm. I'm jet lagged. I need a minute. I just need Christmas. See? Wow. I see a roommate um, who knows the future before my eyes. So <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yes. Honestly, really great job. Yeah. That was tough. That was so hard. Oh. You did great. You did a great job. Um, proud of you. On Thanks. on the note of Christmas songs, you have a virtual Christmas concert coming up on December 11th and December 12th. I do. Those I, are accurate. Could those you tell our so listeners accurate. where to find the tickets yeah. and what time for the shows, all the good stuff? It's so easy. Literally go to melindadolittle.com. Oh. That, that, it's like the first page that will open up when you get there and you'll see tickets to it. But it's like, it's going to be just a fun show. I've had the best time putting this show together and I didn't think I would because we do Christmas tours every year. And I thought I was going to like miss it so much that I wouldn't enjoy this process, but it is so much fun. It's so much fun. So the show will be fun. It's going to be on zoom so that I can see everybody's faces and, um, I have a special screen just so I can look at y'all and it is December 11th at 7 30 p.m central time so whatever okay. that means for you and then December 12th at 2 30 p.m central time so it's a little matinee if you will um and that's for some of my overseas friends and everything because yes they, they're like why do you keep doing concerts in the middle and for the and for the fans on the walkers <laughs> yes yeah because 7 30 is pushing it right it's pushing it depending on your time zone yes. especially <laughs> Yeah. Um, and some of them are like, what you mean by Zoom? So we're learning, <laughs> we're learning as we go, but that's, it's opened up like new fans for me and new people to sing for. And this show, I will be, I will be rapping some Busta Rhymes and Justin Bieber. I'm not gonna Yes. Lie. That's going to happen. And um, I have a version of All I Want for Christmas is You that that's another one of those songs that I love, but pro- like when I go to try to sing it like Mariah, it's not cute. And so I'm like, I'm not your Mariah. Like I grew up on like your Diana Rosses and your Natalie Coles. And so we, we made it almost like a Motown version of all I want for Christmas. Mm. And wow. it might have a little Natalie Cole at the end that makes me very happy. So y'all yeah. just got to come. It's going to be fun. And well, there's... y'all heard the playlist. So yeah. Go yeah. Ahead, like get ready to sing alongside Melinda. We're I mean, I'll be there. there as soon as that unemployment check comes on Friday. Girl, I'm, <laughs> I'm even singing Oh Holy Night. So if that tells you anything. Come on. <laughs> I love Christmas. We'll it. definitely be there. Definitely. Oh, thank you. I'm and excited. with that, I mean. Yeah. Last question. Where can, where can everyone find you? Uh, we have MelindaDoolittle.com, of course. Yes. And then I'm at MDoolittle on Twitter and Instagram. And fantastic something is on official melinda doolittle is facebook that's what it is <laughs> <There we are. laughs> fantastic it, it is it is um a great it's been a great honor to have you here honestly we're oh. so grateful that you came to our baby of a pod so thank you so much for your time melinda i love it this has been so much fun and y'all are good you are good at this i like these were hard questions for me and that doesn't happen that often anymore so thank you thank you i'm sweating in my onesie (laughs) (laughs) onesie on the top party on the bottom sweat on the top yeah yeah. got a little got a little onesie down here yeah Yeah, for all those video watchers (laughs) (laughs) but thanks for joining us we will have you in person when everyone wears the masks and distances and and gets a vaccine please lord please do it amen But yes, thank you. You love y'all. Love you too. Love you.